Hi, welcome to part 9 videos of Zinc Ultrascale Plus and Beta Linux. The title of this video is NVIDIA Jetson AGX Xavier SPI Interface and using Xilinx ELA. This is basically section 2 of the previous video. These videos are in part supported by Bleakfeld company. Bleakfeld creates LiDARs high performance accurate easy to use lidars you can check their website in previous video we described the test that we want to do using jetson agx and zcu 104 and now we go ahead with the practical test i'm recording two screens one screen is for jetson agx another one is our vivado design and the vitis environment here we are in um, Jetson AGX environment. The Linux is running as I described to you. It is Jetpack 4.4. And the first thing I want to do, I want to show you, is this Jetson IO application that you need to run to set up the SPI pins. This is basically where you can do the configuration. I go to configure 40 pin expansion header and I enable the SPI. I have already done this. If you are using any of the Jetsons, the procedure is exactly the same and the pins are similar. So you come here, you set SPI, and then as you make the change, you need to reboot your Jetson and then those pins in the next run will get connected to the SPI controller. I have created a simple application which performs SPI transactions. The application is basically coming from the example available for SPI dev. Our purpose right now is to send this array of TIGs. Basically these eight bytes you see here are the ones that we want to transfer over the SPI link and we want to receive them at the CU104 side and to see them with the system ELA. All I need to do is to run make. And the interesting point here is I'm building my application inside Jetson. So I don't need to build it on my laptop. I just build it directly here inside Jetson. I have my executable already. Now, before I run the executable, I want to show you what we have inside dev. Inside dev, we have two nodes, dev SPI 00, dev SPI 01. And I described to you these two nodes in previous video. I need to turn on my ZCU 104 and I need to program the ZCU 104. Basically, I need to program the PL so that the system ELA that I showed you become available and ready and it can capture the samples for me. Now, let's go to the notebook which contains our Vivado environment and the Vitis. Once more, here is our Vivado project. What we are doing right now is we have this system ELA here and this port and with this system ELA, I want to capture whatever happens on this port. I want to monitor what happens there. Now, important point is if I want to use this guy, I need the minimum thing I need is the clock. And the clock is being produced by the PS. It's important that I program the PL. Basically, I program my FPGA with this design. And it's also important that I make sure that this clock is running. So I need a simple minimal initialization, a simple application be running on my PS. The system ELA is sampling the contents of this interface at 200 megahertz. All right, my Vitus environment. This is basically, I have not done anything. All I have done here is I have just exported my hardware, the XSA file has got created. Then I have come to Vitis and I have started a new project, a simple Hello World project. I don't need to do any C coding, 
coding right now, I don't want to run a specific application there at this U104 side. I just want to have the PS initialized and the clock running. My ZU104 board right now is connected to my PC and I will program the ZU104 through JTAG. So I have here run configurations and I have created a run configuration. And for the run configuration I have here, I have given him the location of the beta stream generated for this Vivado project. Connection between my laptop, which is running Whitis, and the CU104 is local. Basically, I have a very simple USB cable connected between the CU104 and my notebook. And this is a simple JTAG connection. I just press run. Okay. As I do that, it programs the PL and initializes the PS. So basically my clocks get enabled, get running. And so I will be able to use the system ELA. I can go to Vivado environment. And inside Vivado environment, I can go to hardware manager. Inside hardware manager, I can connect to my ZCU 104 board. And as soon as I get connected to my ZCU 104 board, the hardware manager of Vivado starts showing me all of the ELAs that I have in my design. So if I, if I go back to block design, in my Vivado project, I have this ELA one here, which is responsible for monitoring the XI interface of Quad SPI. I have this ELA zero here, which is responsible for monitoring the GPI and some other signals. And I have this ELA two here, I have three ELAs. And so when I go to hardware manager, I have three ELAs. The one which is more interesting for us is ELA3, is the last one. And it contains the SPI signals that we are looking for. Our goal is basically to monitor these signals. Now, if I trigger the ELA freely, I, I just tell ELA, hey, capture the signals and just show me what you are capturing. I have. I have this waveform. Basically, what's happening right now is slave select is high and the other guys are zero. Clock, SPI clock is zero. And MOSI, which is IO zero, is zero. And MISO, which uh, the signal being driven from our logic is also zero. Now, I can define a trigger for the system ELA. So I can tell him, hey, only capture the signals when a certain condition holds true. And for our case, a, a good condition can be, um, I want to capture the signals when a slave select goes low. Or another good condition can be, um, I want to capture signals when I see a SPI clock, when a clock starts happening on the lane. And, um, and this is the trigger condition I'm using here. Let's set it again. So all I need to do is to add this signal, add this signal and set my trigger condition. Now here I can um, basically set also the starting point for trigger. Here right now I'm telling the Vivado that, hey, when the capture, when the trigger condition happened and you fully captured the waveforms, then uh, basically show me the events happening on the waveforms from 500 samples before the trigger point up to the length of the buffer that I have. And since I'm not really that interested in what's happening before trigger, I can put a smaller number here. Like I will put 100. So this guy will move in the next trigger here. Now, looking at these numbers here 
up there. These are sample numbers. As you can imagine, the system ELOG can capture limited number of samples for me. And this is configurable. If I go back to my block design, system ELOG 2, this is the guy I'm using right now. All of these ELOGs are basically realized using FPGA resources. And as I told you, they are using the block memories as their buffer to capture the waveforms and to put, to put the waveforms inside that block memory, inside that buffer, so that later they can transfer it to the laptop using the JTAG interface. Now, if I double click here, in configuration of system ELA, I have told him sample data depths should be 2048. Obviously, the more, the deeper is your buffer, the more is the number of block memories that you will use. So this system, ELA, right now is consuming 23 block memories with these buffer depths. Now, I go back to my hardware manager. I can capture 2048 samples total. And as I showed you, my trigger position will move here. And now that I have configured system, yeah, everything is fine. The trigger condition is fine. I just enable the trigger. Now, as I press this button, you will see that my system ELA, hardware ELA 3, is waiting for trigger. Look, I can stop it. I can tell him, hey, just, just sample whatever, just sample unconditionally the signals and show them to me. But if I press this one, I'm telling him only trigger when this condition holds true. So right now my ELA is waiting, waiting for SCK to start oscillating, basically to start getting one. Now all I need to do is at NVIDIA side, I need to start the SPI transaction. All I need to do is to press enter. What did happen is as I pressed and as I ran my application at Jetson side, uh, basically a set of SPI transaction started happening. Obviously, the meso line, which is being driven by ZU104, is remaining zero because we are not sending any data back to NVIDIA. But the Jetson sent us some data over the SPI interface. So it, it drives the um, slave select low and it started putting some data and also the clock out on its MOSI and SCK lines. So as you see, we are able to transfer data from AG Xavier to our ZU 104. Now, next step. Next video, we will do the same from the SU-104 to the Z board. That time, we are basically using this interface here, Axi Quad SPI, and we are running Peta Linux here on our CPU cores. And in our Peta Linux, we will run an application similar to what you have seen at the Jetson side, 